stuff I'm about to show you. So first, multipathing in VMware is getting better and better natively. But customers have been saying to both VMware and the EMC, we want what we can do in the physical, which is PowerPath. PowerPath is the leader for good reason. Very broad support, many paths, load balancing, and predictive load balancing algorithms. So you can see here, this is Virtual Center, and see how it says NMP. I'm just going to rescan, and by the way, this is a future build of ESX and uh, virtual infrastructure. And you'll notice in a second, after I rescan, it just switched to PowerPath, right? So basically, PowerPath here is running in the VM kernel. It's not in the service console, right? So what does that translate into as a benefit? Well, here we've got some ESX top counters, right? So we've got two active paths. You can see that they're very nicely balanced all automatically. All the stuff that you like about PowerPath, active discovery of new paths, uh, and automatic configuration is all in there. And it supports up to 32 paths. So I just launched a video in the VM. This is actually the EMC World Steve Harrod keynote, where he did Site Recovery Manager and VDI live on stage. It was pretty cool if any of you were there. But if we're going to go in now, we're actually going to actively just kill a path. So if we actively kill a path, you'll notice that it automatically nicely load balances back to the remaining path, which is exactly what you'd expect, right? But of course, when you bring the path back up, it also nicely load balances back, right? And obviously, the two case, the two path case is a triviality. You know, if you're a customer with two HBAs and a Claren, you might actually have 16 paths from the ESX server's perspective. But it also does this across ESX nodes in a cluster. So if one ESX server is hammering the storage array and the, and the network infrastructure in the middle, PowerPath will actually take other ESX servers and shift over their paths knowing what the other one is doing. Right? Very sophisticated capabilities, something that every EMC customer, whether you're Clarion, Solera, Symmetrix, the smallest of the small or the largest of the large will benefit from in the future version of VMware uh, infrastructure. But it also has got a benefit in just straight, flat out performance. So here we've got Iometer. Top is vStorage with PowerPath, bottom is native multipathing using round robin, which is current experiment, currently experimental. And you can see 2,000 IOs per second, 800 IOs per second. 4 milliseconds latency, 12 milliseconds latency. And again, I'm not saying this to be to poo-poo native multipathing. It's making huge leaps and strides. But the vStorage APIs allowed us to give the capabilities that we can provide to the customers without uh, you know, breaking the model for them. I'll give you a second example. So what we've got here is we have two LUNs. And I'm going to show you something that I think is a very, very cool. So you guys hopefully saw the fault tolerant demo that was in the um, Steve Harrod. Uh, session. Fault tolerant D VMs require something called an eager zero thick format. So you zero out the VM in advance. There's this feature in this tool where you can go in, again, this is a future build of uh, virtual infrastructure, where you can go in and set an advanced feature called data mover, which can do both a uh, copy or an offload. The copy could be used for the storage array to do, for example, accelerated storage vMotion. Instead of copying the files, we could move the blocks that make up just a part of a VM. The offload, which is what I'm about to demonstrate here, says instead of sending me 100 gigabytes worth of zeros, which consumes real SAN traffic, instead say, hey, Array, I'm about to send you a million zeros. I'm going to send you it once. You just repeat internally. And so what's the net? The red line here is the non-offloaded VM, and we're looking how much data is flowing over the fabric into the array. And you can see it's going to drive about you know, 150 megabytes per second. Now, we've accelerated this just for the purpose of the demo. But this value that you're seeing is actually extended over 10 minutes where your fabric is being hammered with zeros. right? So 150 millis uh, megabytes per second is saturating a gigabit Ethernet link. right? Notice the blue line, which is the offloaded VM, zero data transmitted. right? So as you're creating new VMs, and by the way, this helps in all of the VMDK formats as well, including the, just the zeroed thick format, because those basically write a zero right before they write the data into it as they're filling up the VMDK. All of this offload, again, is something that every EMC customer will benefit from like that when the new version of VMware infrastructure ships. That's the power of these APIs that we're working together to leverage to integrate the value of the storage layer and the VMware layer. The other thing that's kind of cool is those use massively multi-core Xeon processors. And now what we're trying to figure out is, 
okay, we took it from 150 megabytes worth of consumed bandwidth down to zero, but it still took two to 10 minutes either way. Can we actually just make it zero and cut the time down by a factor of 10? So VMs are provisioning faster with no impact on your SAN network. I think that's very cool. Who think that's cool? 